On today's episode of Don't Blame Me, we have my boyfriend, Mots, a.k.a. Mark Ruffalo, and we're talking about how to spice up a long-distance relationship. Thanks to Audible for supporting Don't Blame Me. For a free audiobook with a 30-day free trial, go to audible.com slash blame or text blame to 500-500. Thanks to RX Bar for supporting Don't Blame Me. RX Bar is a whole food protein bar with no BS. Get 25% off your first order at rxbar.com slash blame and use the promo code blame. That's rxbar.com slash blame, promo code blame. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to a brand new episode of Don't Blame Me. (laughs) My guest today is someone special. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Special. Okay. Special, like, you know. Oh, my God. Like, titty special or special, like, a maximum titty special? special? Pity. Pity. Pity special. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, God. like, on edge already. <laughs> um, Mods, my boyfriend, is on today. What's up, guys? In honor of, um, this is our Valentine's Day-themed episode. Hallmark Capitalism Day. What? You're still getting me a present. Obviously. I feel like I don't need to get you a present, though. Right? Yeah, I'm good. Cool. You heard it here first. Um, if you guys want to watch this episode, we're filming it for YouTube. Uh, and if you guys want to see how uncomfortable he gets and how annoying I get, you should check it out. Um, but yeah, are you excited to be on the podcast? Very excited. I, I feel like our house is one of uh, unsolicited advice. Whoa, fuck you. <laughs> Is that no, not me? No, that, 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 that's a shot at oh, me. But you're give, you give unsolicited shot. advice? You do. I do. You do. It's like the inner dad. Um, mm-hmm. You know? I, I just do. want the best. I want the best for everybody. Yeah, you just also love giving people a yeah, piece of your mind. Well, yeah. I write a lot of letters. You write a lot of, a lot of Yelp yeah, reviews. You know, <laughs> letters, emails. <laughs> like if Starbucks, like if the drink is a little too hot at Starbucks, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go home. Maybe write a letter. Let them know. <laughs> letter of complaint. Uh, Mel's also here. Hello. Woo woo. What's up, Mel? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. Great. I I'm like really, this is the first time I've we've ever actually oh, good God. other than exchange emails we've like done something cool professional together. You're right. This is kind of cool. Okay. Well, uh, have you listened to any of these podcast episodes recently? I listened to last week's uh, with who Claud- was the guest with Claudia. Okay. Who's the guest before that? Um. I listened to the one with Leo today. I That's, did listen to the oh, one before. You skipped about 15. Uh, I listened to the one with Jarrett. Okay. Um, I listened to the one, obviously the ones with Aislinn, multi-guest. Nope. The well, I listened to the first out. one with Aislinn. Oh, no. <laughs> There's another one, but it's not it out. Hasn't yeah. come out yet. It's not out, so you can't say you listened to it. Okay, so, well, I guess I will explain what this podcast is about for you guys and for Mott, who apparently doesn't listen all not that true. regularly. This is Don't Blame Me. It's an advice podcast. You call in, you leave voicemails and tell us things that are happening in your life and we give you advice. And um, who do you think is better at giving advice? I feel like you're really good at giving advice. Thank you. I I mean, definitely. You're going to definitely be better than me. Great. Unless someone calls in about like something boring like golf or sports or... Don't yeah. have nope. wrong demographic. Wrong, wrong demographic. <laughs> so this isn't going to be like a sports talk radio show. Like no. they're not going to call in and be like, "Hey, hey, Megan, like first time, long time, and I want to ask you about the Lakers next year." I don't give a shit. Thank then you so I've much. Then I've been caller. grossly misled. Mm, my be. If you guys want to call in and leave your voicemails for an upcoming episode, you can call the phone number three one zero six nine four zero nine seven six. That again is 310-694-0976. International callers, email meganpodcast at gmail.com with an audio message. Also, how annoyed are you at me that I don't know your zip code or your area code on your phone number, but I have this one memorized. So when you go to the doctor's office, like I filled out um, something today and they were like, need an emergency contact. And I was like, boom, Megan, boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Your actual number off the top of my head. Um, who do you put in as your emergency contact? The podcast. The podcast. <laughs> I would have to. It's the only number I know memorized with a Los Angeles area code. Everything else would be people from back home. I know Aislinn's area code and that's it. Like, I don't know the rest of the number. I don't even know your area code. 
Chewy in the Young calls? love. Yeah, let's get into <laughs> okay, the calls. Okay, guys, let's get into the calls. Hey, I'm 21 years old, and this is the first Valentine's Day that my boyfriend and I are not with each other because he recently just moved. Um, we're from Miami, Florida, and he moved to Orlando, Florida, which is up north. And so this is the first Valentine's Day that we won't be together. Um, it's all very new. He just moved uh, early January, mid-January, actually. So I just kind of wanted some of your advice on how to kind of spice things up, even though we can't, like, see each other in person. Like, should I, like, send him something? Or, like, you know, I've never done, like, phone sex or anything like that. But I would be super open to, and I know he would be, but I just kind of don't know how to go about this or, like, just any tips on how to, like, spice it up, I guess, for those long-distance couples, because it's kind of tough when you're not, you know, with each other. And, yeah, we've been dating for a few years now. Um, I would first say I've never been in, like, a long-distance relationship. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I've never been in a long-distance relationship. So I think my advice uh, is kind of, like, I don't know. I mean, like, I don't think you guys are that far away. Like, can you show up on Valentine's Day? Like, but if you've got work, I get that. But I mean, I, I, I'd be like, send a sexy message. Are you feeling uncomfortable? No. Okay. Well, first of all, like, I, I don't know what like your circumstances are, but like, if she I'm, lives in. T- no, no, no. I okay. mean, like, I don't know if it's like a work thing, like you can't get away from for work or if it's like a school thing, like you can't be away because there's like a test coming coming up or anything like that. Just a note to the guy. Dude, is is Valentine's Day on a weekend? Is it on a Saturday or Sunday? It's a, during the week. It's like it's a during Wednesday. The week. Yeah. I mean, dude, get down there for the weekend before. Come on. It's like a yeah, three hour drive. She's I've been the one she's calling. calling. Yeah. Nah, well, I'm giving a note to the guy. I'm just But saying. he's not listening. Well, he should. Okay. But she called in. No. And right, how do you spice but, up a long distance relationship? All right. But all that said, Triple I think- Triple password uh, protection. <laughs> As I'm saying, if you're going to do it, first of all, here's the thing. I'm going to be super candid. If you're going to take nudes, make sure you look super fucking hot. Like, don't take half-ass nudes. Have a friend take them. True. I've had a friend do that. That's so smart. Have a friend take them. Make sure they're fucking great. So if they, and then also like be like password protect, all that fucking shit. Yeah. Make sure that like if they were to potentially get leaked, make sure you look super fucking good. A la Justin Bieber's. Or, you know, yeah. use like a Dropbox account well, that like automatically deletes after a week. Just saying. We transfer. <laughs> um, but no, also what I would say too is like get some, like if you want to do something like that, like get your friend to take like a sexy Polaroid pictures of you or like sexy printed out pictures and mail them to him. That's good. Like he doesn't have a digital copy of it. Um, yeah, mail that. And like that could be fun and like a, like a little like kinky surprise. And you could also like send like a couple leading up to Valentine's Day and they could all be like surprises in that stuff. I think that could be a good way to. And then I think if you like want to try phone sex or whatever, like bring it up. I'm sure he's going to be down. Yeah, I think I, I like what you said about like kind of like the lead up to yeah. it. I would definitely, you know, I would I would say like, you know, build the anticipation a little bit, like spend the week before, like, you know, sending floaty messages, Woo! sending some like floaty texts, like really kind of like, <laughs> get into the rhythm of like being away Sex. from each other, but being connected. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so, you know, like set the tone, like send a couple of 30 te- text messages, like see how he responds and kind of like coax him into, you know, making it, <laughs> you know, making it fun it? while you're not together. Yeah. I and think then, that's a good idea. and then like on the big day, you can send the Polaroids or, or yeah, send, send something a little extra special. Your underwear. <laughs> <laughs> She's 21. Overnight that. Overnight Ew. and expensive. What? Ew. Expensive? Like yeah, for I work? Know. Well, I maybe. What's her job? I don't know. What's your imagination? Ew. Wonder? Ew. You can also FaceTime. Yeah, you can, yeah, FaceTime. You can FaceTime. FaceTime. Just also, here's the thing. If you're going to FaceTime in that, situ- in that situation, do a trial FaceTime with like yeah. one of your friends. Make sure you got your right angles. Make sure you're not like struggling with lighting and like flattering and all that stuff. Be like, hey, best friend, I'm about to FaceTime you. I'm butt ass naked. I need you to make sure I look good. 
Maybe, I would say that. Maybe buy a uh, a ring buy light. A, buy a mount for the phone. You know. Yeah, hands free. Yeah, hands, hands free. free. Do it from so your like, do it from your computer. That works. That too. too. Oh that yes. Too. See, Mel is like. Mel's like, Mel, Mel's like shit, Mel. super practical. <laughs> yeah. You and I are like, okay, we're being you need to like cheeky. Mel's like, okay, here's what you gotta do. <laughs> you set up the Let's get down to fucking business. And get the mount and like all and like Mel's like, do I've you have a computer? A, yeah, like, I've you been probably in a long do. Oh. Ah, I have way too short of attention span for that. ADHD cannot do that. I gotta say, I was in one long distance relationship. Didn't 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 work out. Obviously. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God. Here we are. Oh, we're struggling to I high five for all you audio like, listeners. God, we are, like, we need to loosen up. Ooh, ooh, I'm loose as fuck. I'm nervous as hell. Are you? It's yeah. so funny. You're doing great. You Thank are doing you. great. Should we go on to the next one? Let's go to yes. the next one. On to the next call. Good luck. Hey, Megan. It's I am 20 years old, and I recently met this guy off Tinder. Um, I'm only on the app because I like the attention that I get whenever people like me or super like me or whatever. And this guy super likes me. So, wow, yes, bless. He is super attractive. He's 22. So, I mean, like, not really an age difference, just a little bit. Um, and so, like, we met about a month and a half ago, a little bit more, than, like, almost two months ago. And we've gone out multiple times since. And he's really sweet and really funny. And it's always a really good time. Like, we always end up, like, dying of laughter whenever we're together um this is my dilemma so I don't want to come off like that crazy person who pretty much rushes everything and he is that person who doesn't rush things and so like I like to know at least where I stand with the guy and I asked him the other day I'm like hey look like no I don't want you to think I'm rushing but like you know where do you see this going and he kind of think he didn't blow off the question but he did say, like, oh, hey, like, I don't know. Like, I mean, like, we're still getting to know each other. And I, I totally get it. But, like, it's just one of those things where I'm like, okay, I need to be at least sure that you're not seeing anyone. Am I a little crazy for thinking that? Just because I don't know. I haven't been in a like, serious relationship, but he's literally, like, the sweetest and the funniest and, like, so attractive, you guys. Like, we made out all, like, a whole bunch of times. I'm like, wow. Big dig, too. Like, yes. But, like. Am I crazy for like wanting to at least know where I stand? Tie that big dick because, down. I mean, I know he's still on Tinder, and I mean, granted, I am too, but I'm not seeing anyone else other than him, and I at least want to know for sure if he's not seeing anyone else either. So please give your input. Kind of buried the lead with that one. I, I, I. You know, he's like this. He's funny. He's funny. And by the way, big massive dick. Dog. Why don't you lead with that, girl? Um, do you think she's crazy? Um, I'm, I might not have caught it, but like how, how long did she a say? A month that? and a half. You were moving way too fast. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Six weeks. Yeah. I mean, even if you said it was three months, I'd still be like, hold your horses. Um, you already got the answer out of him. I think like you're saying this, that like he kind of blew off the question. He really just answered the question and said like, we're still just starting to get to know each other. Um, you're not exclusive. I would just say that right off the bat. Like you want, you're saying that you want to make sure he's not sleeping with other girls. Um, he probably is. And he ever, has every right to be until you guys decide that you're monogamous and you're not hooking up with other people. Um, and I think like you don't as great and as cool as you think he is and all that stuff. You also remember like you're super cool too. And I'm not saying like play hard to get, but maybe be a little less available. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I was super unavailable when we first started dating. Oh yeah. It was like the most, I was like MIA. (laughs) Definitely worked. There was definitely, um, there was one text I sent. I was like, Hey, like, do you want to hang out tonight? Obviously I sent more than that, but like the gist was, do you want to hang out tonight? Saw like three days went by (laughs) and, uh, the text I got back was like, Oh my God, like, I'm so sorry. I missed this. Like I've been super busy. Maybe hit me up like the end of the week and we can see him hanging out next week. And I was like, Wow. I, I can't believe this is working on me, but it's totally working. Hey, on it me. worked. Totally worked. I'm also just bad. My email can testify. I'm just bad at fucking responding to That true, is also true. true. Yes. Even now. Six weeks is, you're moving way too fast. That was, yeah. The- I think, I, yeah, I, I would say that. I don't necessarily, I wouldn't deem you crazy at all, but I would say what you're asking for is too much right now. Um, I think, yeah, I mean, if, if I think if you really like this guy and you think he's like super cool and awesome, 
um, then cool. Totally continue to date him and maybe you guys will get exclusive. But I also don't think the reason, I don't think like him not being exclusive with you right now means that he doesn't want a relationship with you. I just think it's so early on. Exactly like he's saying is that he just wants to, you guys are still getting to know each other. I wouldn't say that he's like putting you, like ruling you out for that. You haven't reached that threshold. I'd say if you were together for like a, like, six months to like nine months and he like doesn't want to identify or like determine what you guys are like term wise um then I would worry that's what I would say and I would um I don't know I think yeah yeah he hasn't dumped her no yeah. you know and I, I think like even if he in his mind he does want to be in a relationship with you you kind of have to let him come to that realization himself yeah otherwise he's you're not going to enjoy like, the relationship yeah, you're in. yeah like the minute you're like if you're like six weeks in you're like all right dude like what's up like i need you to define this and that so early like he's gonna feel like he you're kind of like pushing Smothered. him into a corner and like then any thoughts that he has about wanting to date you might evaporate because he doesn't want to feel pressured mm -hmm. and also like Go out and get a couple more super likes. Like, boost your ego a little bit. You got yeah. a little bit more time. Get some super. Like, what does that feel like? Game the super like. Game the super like. Has I was anyone off the ever market super liked before you? super likes came, Were came you? in vogue. I think so. Mm. Yeah, I don't remember getting super likes, and I feel like I really would have gotten super liked for this oh, around. Get some super likes. God, yeah. I feel like that's like, I mean, that is like a high you cannot trade. <laughs> I'm them. sure it is. Um, and yeah, and I would also just say one last time. I don't think you need to rehash it with him. I think you asked him originally and I think he told you his answer with him saying you guys are just getting to know each other. Yeah. So yeah, go get, out, get yeah, some drinks get, with other people, get some super likes, feel good about yourself and um, don't put all your eggs in one basket either. Just because yeah. the first guy you meet who's like nice and cool and funny and has a massive dick, there are other guys, probably smaller dicks, <laughs> but like they're pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, congrats for both of you. Yeah, give them big, some time. Big accomplishments. <laughs> okay, on to the next call. I'm almost 25, and I've been with my fiancé for four and a half years, getting married in May of 2018, and I just had a couple questions for my podcast slash internet sister. Um, so everything is really great with my fiancé. He's got an awesome personality, my second half, and my family loves him. I love his friends. I love his family. He's an amazing person. And we really don't have disagreements or yelling or screaming or arguments at all. But whenever there's like a serious conversation that we have to have, whether it be with the wedding or with our joining bank accounts or whatever, whatever we may be talking about, something serious, I feel like he always has the upper hand. He is seven years older than me, and I feel like sometimes I just say, okay, whatever, because I want to end the disagreement, and I don't know as much as him as I think I do. I just kind of give up at that point because I just feel like he knows more than me, and sometimes I know in my gut that I'm right about a decision. And he just kind of overturns it. Um, he is very, very sweet. And I don't want to let that um, kind of go without saying. But I just feel like I don't know where to go with it because every time we have a serious conversation, I just kind of shut down because um, I can't get my word out about what I think. Um, so I just kind of whatever it. I don't know if you have any advice. Um, I mean, I've gotten courage up and I've kind of had the upper hand in situations, but he always comes out and wins. And I don't like to say that it's a competition where whoever's on top wins or whatever, but I just feel like I don't know what to do anymore about these serious conversations about our future. Um, if you could just help me out, uh, that'd be great. Hey, hey, hey. There's a lot more I wish I knew. But what do you wish you knew? Um, I guess like, first of all, like that's kind of like, this is some, uh, this is a criticism against him because it feels like the, 
it feels like he uses the age difference. This is just like, like n- an impl- all knowing yeah, powers. just like an implication. And it feels like he uses the age difference to kind of like dictate how decisions get made because it's like the seven the seven years that he has on her, so to speak, like automatically nullifies anything that like she would have to say, mm-hmm. which isn't you know is shouldn't really be like too much of a consideration. Yeah. Um, you know, I, it'd be interesting to hear a little bit more about like what, like the specific types of dis- disagreements they are. It sounds mostly like kind of like the financial, yeah, money like stuff. the, like the real kind of like, um, nitty gritty of like getting married, like bank accounts, like mm-hmm. putting your, putting your name on like a mortgage or stuff like that. Um, she said that like she doesn't like to view it like a competition but the way that she was talking it sounds like they both kind of view it as a competition it, for me it sounds like he views this as she's not even participating in the competition yeah. like he kind of has this uh, he's he's kind of regarding you as like a, oh you'll understand when you get older thing i have these years on this um, what I would say is like, first of all, that's so fucking frustrating. <laughs> like yeah, there's, because she'll never win. No. And that's the thing. It's like, like it's she'll an, never catch up. It's, I think it was Chris Hemsworth who, I think it was Chris Hemsworth who was doing an interview talking about his kids and how his kids are really competitive with each other. And then one of his kids, he said something, he was like, um, oh, he's like, you know, one day you, if you, if you work really hard, you can be just as big and as strong as your brother. And he goes, but you know what? You'll never be older than your brother. And the kid just burst into tears. And he was like, well, that's just how like age works and that kind of a thing. So I think if that's kind of what he's using as the basis of like why he should be, uh, why he's always right, you're never going to be older than him. He's always going to be this much older than you. And if that's the tactics that he uses, for why everything, all his opinions and his arguments need to be the ones that you guys go with. I would, first of all, I would say like, if it gets into like really big stuff like finances and it's not even necessarily, cause first of all, I have, I have a ton of pride and I don't, I don't like being wrong. I'm rarely wrong, but I understand the feeling of like at a certain point, um, when everything you say or do or whatever that the other person is like, no, that's wrong. This is right. This is right. You kind of start attaching yourself to being like, I just, even if you are right, I want what I'm saying to be right for once ever. Um, not that I'm saying you're doing that, but I mean, if there's something that's like super massive that you genuinely feel like you are in the right on, um, when it comes to like massive things like finances, which affect you just as much as they affect him, I think whether it's like getting like a premarital counselor to like have you guys talk that out or just like couples counseling in general, just to like talk that out and like figure out how you fight and figure out like, how you can get better at this. And both of you probably have things that you can do to improve that. Um, because I would say also like, yeah, if it's stuff that's like really massive, that it comes down to like finances and these things that affect you as an individual, not just like your union together and your relationship. Um, I think it's really important to get that stuff ironed out before you guys get married. Yeah. And, and I would say about like the, the premarital counseling stuff, like the way that you're describing the dynamic is you're you've reached a point of frustration where like you feel like you need something to change yeah and it may feel like you've reached like your ultimate frustration point now I would say that like that point of frustration would be magnified by like five times if you're in a marriage so it, yeah. It's, I'm, I'm sure it's so hard to be, to, you I'd know, be so fucking annoyed. Yeah. To be like, Ugh. to stand up and be like, you know what? Like this time, like, I really need you to hear me. I really need you to hear my side of this argument. Um, and I don't want to do this or like, I don't agree with this, but you have to do it now because it's not going to get better. If you do it like five years from now, like on your, the fifth anniversary of your marriage, it's going to be a lot harder and a lot more complicated. So I, you know, you said that like you kind of crumble every time it gets to a certain point, you know, all I can say is like when it gets to that point, the next time, like you have to like say something now, because if you don't, uh, waiting a couple of years after you guys are married, it's just going to be yeah. that, that much more harder. Cause I think it's valid. Like, I think it's totally valid for you to feel super shitty about this. And I also don't think this necessarily makes him a bad person. And also if he talks down to you 
I don't know if he talks down to you in like the worst moments, but he doesn't in the best moments. I don't necessarily think that they kind of cancel each other out. I kind of think like you should take that in mind too. If he makes you feel that way um, and he's not willing to change, I don't think you need to accommodate that. I think you need to know that that's not okay. So that's what I would say. On to the next call. You're doing a good job, babe. Thanks. Hey, Megan. My name's and I am 22. Um, so my problem is a little bizarre. I met my boyfriend over a year ago, and two weeks after we started hanging out, his brother passed away, and things got serious between us very quickly. We ended up moving in together uh, about six months after all of this happened. And after we moved in together, things slowly started to change, and he started falling into this deep depression and wouldn't seek help. And um, just for context, he is 28 and I am 22, so there is an age difference as well. Uh, Anyways, he ended up losing his job a week before Christmas in 2017, and now it is January 22nd, and he still has yet to apply for jobs. And I'm just kind of wondering, what do I do? I am a little less attracted to him now knowing that he doesn't have much drive, but I also feel for him as somebody who also has dealt with depression in the past, and I know it's not easy to get out of. So how do I be there for somebody, but also look out for myself and get myself out of a situation before it gets worse? I would, I, you know, the first thing I would say, and, and I, I don't want to sound uh, callous towards what he's going through because that, I mean, I can't, you know, I'm really close with my brother and like, I know that like, if my brother passed away or was gone, like it would be one of the worst things I could imagine happening to me. So I can only imagine how he feels. Um, and also like the, indignity of losing your job a week yeah, before Christmas. I don't know who that employer is, but like, yeah, fuck them. Yeah. You are Ugh. God. But, um, all that said, um, I think you really, you, you can work as hard as you can to help someone and, um, you know, be there for them and be support for them. But at a certain point, if it becomes pretty clear that they don't have the interest in helping themselves and it's just like really, really bringing you down as well and you have done everything you can that you feel like you can help them, you need to start thinking about what you can do to kind of like make your own situation more positive and like I I just you know I'm not saying break up with him I'm not saying like move out I'm not saying any of that yet I'm just I'm saying that you really need to start um saying you know you you, I I really need you to get help like for us or for our situation because like I'm really concerned it affects you you too like it affects your relationship I'd also say, I think if this had happened and you guys had been together for like 10 years, I would say it's something different, but your relationship was on fast forward, hyper speed. Cause all of this happened and grief brings people closer together. I don't, I mean like when you find out that someone you've just started seeing is going through this massive loss and they start confiding in you, those feelings you have for him are going to be like amplified and you guys are going to get way closer, way quicker than you would if it was like a perfect, very happy situation. Um, and so for that reason, I would say like, just like Monsa saying, like he has to, he has to want to deal with this and he has to want to get, um, get help and like be able to deal with this grief. And there's literally, you, you can't do anything about that. Like you can be as supportive as you are, but at a certain point it doesn't even become helpful. He's not receiving any of that. It's just draining you. But you need to prioritize your own mental health as well. And I think a lot of times when people go through situations like this or their partners, go, when the people's partners are going through something, we feel this immense guilt because it's like, well, they're going through so much. I should be over accommodating. But at a certain point, if he also has feelings for you, he's not going to want you to sacrifice your own mental well-being and your own mental health to just be there for him when he really 
might just need to deal with this on his own. Um, and I, yeah, I, I would also say like losing someone in grief and all that stuff, it's incredibly hard, but, um, he, pro- I think it's probably smart for him to spend this time around his family and people who really, I, I don't know, like the, who are all dealing with that together. I think with you right now, like, I think he's just going to be dumping a lot of that stuff on you, which a relationship is about like listening to other people's problems and dealing with that stuff. But you guys haven't been dating that long. And I think right now it sounds like it's just doing more harm than good to you. But just like you were saying, I don't think you need to necessarily like break up with him, but I think you need not an ultimatum, but being like, I really care about you. I really like you every, if you love him say that, but like everything you're going through, I can't imagine it's so incredibly difficult and I'm trying my absolute best to be there for you. But this is really taking a toll on my own mental health. And I really feel like I'm taking steps backwards and in, in trying to help you pull, pull, pull you out of this. So it would really mean a lot. For, I don't, so I don't think I'll be able to continue this relationship unless we're able, unless you are able to go to therapy or we're able to go to therapy together to really talk about this and like work through it. And the last thing I would say is if you're scared about, um, making an ultimatum, try doing things with him that are constructive that kind of help him get out of this funk. So when you come home from school or for work, be like, hey, when I get home tonight, um, we're going to spend an hour and a half updating your resume. Or we're going to spend an hour like looking at your LinkedIn and we can job hunt together. And that way you can kind of help him start getting active and like trying to pick himself up. And it's not as like, abrupt or like as mm-hmm. final as like this is an ultimatum and if you're doing that and it's still not getting better then you can start kind of thinking about taking like a little bit more drastic actions but trying and doing stuff like that might help kind of bring him up a little yeah. bit and I would also maybe reach out to his family and tell them that you're like concerned yeah. um and or all his that friends. stuff yeah and and because I mean his parents are obviously going through the same sort of thing so making sure that he's not um putting on a good face for everybody else and really breaking down around you. But I'm so sorry. That sucks. Yeah. Okay, guys, we're going to take a quick break and we will be back. Audiobooks are great for helping you be a better you. For our audience, Audible is offering a free audiobook with a 30-day free trial. If you want to listen to it, Audible has it. Just go to audible.com slash blame or text blame to 500-500 and browse their unmatched selection of audio content. Download a free title and start listening. It's that easy. Millions of Audible members can access performances by entertainers, magazines, and amazing narrators. I've been listening to The Last Black Unicorn by Tiffany Haddish. First of all, um, if you don't know who Tiffany Haddish is, what are you doing? She is so incredibly funny, and I've become so insanely obsessed with her that when I saw that she's coming out with a book, I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to hold off until I can listen to her read this book. And guys, um, she, she there's performances <laughs> within the book, and it's an experience that you literally cannot get with just reading it. You have to listen to it. She's so, so, so incredibly funny. Uh, It literally makes me laugh out loud as I'm driving in my car, like being sad after I don't book auditions. Yeah, it's like having a friend in your car, which if you have a friend in your car too, you can both listen at the same time. And Audible also offers Whisper Sync for voice. You can switch back and forth between reading and listening to the audiobook across many devices, including Amazon's Kindle and Echo without ever losing your place or missing a word. So get a free audiobook with a 30-day free trial at audible.com slash blame or text blame to 500-500. That's A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot com slash blame or text blame to 500-500. Thanks to RX Bar for supporting Don't Blame Me. RX Bar is a whole food protein bar made with 100% whole ingredients and no BS, such as no added sugar, artificial colors, artificial flavors, preservatives, or fillers. They're made with a few simple, clean ingredients where every ingredient serves a purpose. For example, egg whites, yeah, they're our main source of protein that's easy for your body to absorb. They're also gluten-free, soy-free, and dairy-free if your body is high-maintenance like mine. RX Bars come in 11 delicious flavor varieties, whether you're sweet or savory, chocolatey, or fruity, there's an RX bar for you. And because there are real food ingredients, they actually taste really good. You can actually taste the ingredients like the real fruit and the sea salt. 
and the peanut butter. RX bars are ideal for breakfast on the go, a snack at the office, throwing in your bag on the plane, throwing to a friend who's hungry, asking a friend to throw them to you into your mouth because you're hungry and you play catch like that, tossing into your backpack for a bike ride or a hike or just a long strenuous walk to the kitchen, pre or post workout snack or just a snack when you're laying on your couch watching television. I'm a huge fan of RX bars. They're really, really, really easy. I love being able to throw them in my bag when I decide I'm going to leave the house and I'm probably going to get snacky or hungry. I think they taste great. I am personally more of a fan of like, I think I like the peanut butter one. And then I like the chocolate sea salt one. Mott's likes the fruity ones. So we just get to split them in half and it's perfect and great. And RX Bar is offering 25% off your first order at rxbar.com slash blame. When you use the promo code blame, that's rxbar.com slash blame. Promo code blame. T A S M R. Okay, I, oh, can you? That's not even funny. It just was funny. <laughs> that literally wasn't. That wasn't even supposed to be a joke. Okay. I love tea. Okay. What the fuck? <laughs> Let me talk. Okay. Okay, guys, we are back from our break and on to the next call. Pull yourself together, dude. Hi, Megan and guest. Um, this is I am 21 years old and I need some advice. So I just recently got back from being an au pair, which is like an abroad nanny from Sweden. And while I was there, I met this guy. His name is Lucas and we just fell in love. Um, we have a really strong relationship and we are just kind of certain that we want to be with each other for this portion of our lives. And uh, he just came back here. He came back to the States to meet my family. Um, and they all love him and all my friends love him. And I forgot to say that we've been together for like eight months now. And right now we've decided that we would like to do the long distance thing and So far, I have applied for a visa to go and live with him in Sweden for uh, the next two years. But it's going to take about a year to get the visa. And so right now, we need to be long distance. And that's something that Lucas and I are very comfortable with. And we realize that's going to be really awful. And we're just going to have to make it work. And we we both have complete trust in one another. And... Yeah, but really my advice would be, like, do you know anybody or have you ever been in a situation where you were long distance and maybe it actually did work? Because really the only, the only like, things in media that we see for long distance is that you're long distance and people, your boyfriend will cheat on you or something like that. So I was just kind of hoping that you could give us a little bit of advice maybe to figure out how to cope with being long distance for so long the people calling in like the 20 like me more than you like me no <laughs> but thank you you're welcome uh the 20 21 and 22 year olds that call into this show vastly vastly more mature than i was at their age no because they're the girls calling in about right. you the fuck boys you are still a, a you're still a character in these stories First Except of all, for, for this girl, this girl, she's first of all, she's living the fucking Lizzie yeah. McGuire movie. God, au pair, Sweden, good like choice. This Mats thinks he's Swedish. No, I don't think I'm Swedish. <sighs> Just okay, I'm Swedish roots. It's nice. Um, first of all, this is fucking beautiful. Like, this is a Hallmark movie. I am so happy for you. This is like everything I wanted at 16 years old. Like, I'm like, you know, I just like want to go abroad and like meet a foreign guy. Could have been a Paolo, but like, got, like, and just like fall in love. Like, that's fucking amazing. Like, so, oh, so many black turtlenecks. So many black and berets, except <laughs> you're in Sweden. So there's no berets. I don't yeah, think. I feel like it's, it's more like very. Yeah. Nice tell us about beanies. your people. Uh, no people. No, I'm good. Never mind. Uh, apparently, we're cold. We're emotionally remote, which is not good for you. But I hope Lucas <laughs> maybe bucks the trend. Okay. Um, okay. Um, okay. So do you do you know anybody that it's worked out? I would. Do, do you know the example I was going to give? Who? Well, here's the thing. I think long distance. The only way long distance works out, and we've said this before on the podcast, if there's an end goal in sight. So like. Yeah. Having it be a year of you applying to get your visa, I think in like an indefinite long distance relationship doesn't fucking work because 
there, there is no, there's no time period that you're all working, that you're both working towards. It's kind of just like it, it, you get stale and you get bored and it gets stagnant. Um, our friends, well, technically my friend, like they're, they're friends, your friends them by association. Um, Leo, who's on the podcast, oh, yeah. Leo and Maddie, Maddie and him, when they first met, she was living, I think she was, she was in New York and then moved back to like London really, really quickly right after they first, like before they were even officially dating, but they did the long distance between LA and London for a good amount of time before she moved out here. And, um, obviously I can't speak on his behalf. Technically I can't because he's my brother and we're related. Um, we're not really related, but pretty much. Are. Um, and it was hard. Like I know it was hard for him, but what they just visited each other all the time. Like they didn't really, they had a rule where they wouldn't go a certain amount of time without seeing each other. And the long distance thing definitely sucked because like of time zones and time changes, all that stuff. But they very much did like the, Oh, I'm going to stay up extra late to FaceTime you today. And tomorrow you'll stay up extra late to FaceTime me. So it wasn't like one person was giving more than the other. They were both like really going out of the way to make it work because it's not easy. And especially when it's that long of a distance, like you're, there's time zones you have to think about and like sacrifices of being like, I'm not going to sleep that much so we can talk. Um, so I would say like, I think that's a pretty successful international relation, like long distance relationship that worked out. Um, I would say my advice would be, like plan, plan trips. And every time that you're planning a trip, um, make sure it's enough amount of time that you're spending with each other. I think like just a weekend, it's kind of like, you'll be jet lagged and you won't be able to really experience, like enjoy it. So I'd say like, make sure you're not going more than two months without seeing each other and make sure that you're like spending at least like four to five days with each other each time. Um, and, uh, and yeah, make sure you're like talking and you're staying in communication and all that stuff. Um, I feel like that's, I think like, I think it's totally doable though. It's just a year, but also it's pretty fast for you to move to Sweden. Yeah. But I think that year is a good time. Yeah. To yeah. figure out if that's what you really want right. to. Um, I, I don't know anybody in, in my circle of friends where. Because Leo's my friend. <laughs> I just want you to say it here. Leo is your friend. Yes, I win. Also my friend. Um, I I don't know anybody in my circle where um, it's worked and that they were dating together and then they moved apart and they came back together. Um, I did. Ha- I do have one friend that just got engaged and he actually originally met his girlfriend while we were in college and they met on a study abroad program together. They went to different schools. And they stayed in touch um, from the time that you know we went abroad when we were twenty, and they stayed in touch through the time they kind of came back to living in the same city. They they both moved to New York after college, and they stayed in touch until they were about twenty three or twenty four, and then they started dating again. So that obviously is like a an example of like kind of long distance that had a happy ending. Um, but yeah, just like what Mel said, it's like a year. Um, and it, it sounds, you know, it's, it's a process like getting a visa. So one of the ways that you can kind of like time it out is when there are certain like milestones in the visa process, maybe that that's when you take your trip. Like Aww. you check off a certain, you're going to go so broke though, like well, getting a visa and going to Sweden all the time. Well, we don't know what, uh, we don't know if you should start a GoFundMe. or Lucas are of means, Lucas. but Obviously split the travel, like you go once, mm-hmm. he comes once, like definitely don't always travel to Sweden and go bankrupt. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, like kind of like map out the year and like have those milestones. So rather than like looking a year in advance, it's like you're looking two yeah. months in advance Enjoy the or year. three months in advance. And that way you yeah. guys can kind of have like, you know, like a shared experience that like yeah. uses. And the- you're still dating. Like it's not yeah. just like you're waiting until you're back in the same city to start dating again. Um, I think like you're able to like still enjoy that kind of stuff and not be pining over it. Like plan FaceTime dates, like order the same sort of both order Italian food and like set it up and like you're watching a movie together. Not just like the, Oh, I miss you. I wish we were here together. Or yeah, that's like such a good idea. Like a movie, but also like, yeah, I mean, like find a podcast and yeah. like listen to po- maybe start this one. routines and habits together now that things that you can share that aren't just like your shared interest of missing right. each other. 
Um, and then I would say when you're planning trips, the only other thing I would say is make sure that by the time that you're leaving one trip, the next trip is already on the books. Cause I think it can be really hard Good saying call. goodbye when you're like, when are we going to see each other next? But if you're like, Oh no, we're going to see each other in this amount of time, which Good is these are the tips and tricks I do to keep my long distance friendship with my best friend, Sydney. We talked about that. That's a good suggestion. Also for the next trip, pack lots of really awesome black turtlenecks to like keep in character. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to say something like dirty. And I was like, Ooh. no, pack this, lots this is a and family lots podcast. Of yeah. Pack lots of condoms, kids. Don't this get like pregnant. Half the time is a family podcast. And the other half of the time you're talking about when has it been a family po- podcast S&M. ever. Okay, guys, on to the next call. I'm 20 years old and I've been dating my boyfriend for about a year and a half. Everything in our relationship is going really well. We both make good money. He makes me laugh every day. And we both just moved out and got a townhome together. So basically, I'm the happiest I've ever been. But I have one problem, and it has to do with his mom. Super cliche. But it's not that I don't like her or don't enjoy having her around. But just a few weeks ago, she said something to me that has been on my nerves like to this day uh so she told me that she really misses her son's ex-girlfriend she called me randomly and we talked for about 45 minutes then she mentioned his ex-girlfriend and she told me about the good times they had and how she loved talking to her and could always go to her about a problem and that when the two of them broke up she cried for four months um This isn't the first time she's brought up the ex-girlfriend to me, but it's the first time she's told me that she misses her. So with all that being said, I mean, I have absolutely no idea what to do. Um, Don't know if I should confront her and be like, yo, that was disrespectful. Like, I'm the girlfriend now. Like, why aren't you on the same page? Um, Or just ignore it and move on. So any advice helps. Wow. Fuck this woman. I'm going to go hot take. Get out. Abort. Get abort out. what? Get of the out. relationship? Yeah, get out of You're the You're saying house. give up on the relationship. Because nothing should get between a boy and his mom? No, I just... God, I mean, that is... It's fucked up, but shouldn't weird. she say something? Well, yes. Okay, so maybe I was a little too, uh, a little too extreme in my first, about, my first take. But uh, yeah, you should definitely say Tell something. Tell him or the mom. Ooh... Yeah, does he know that she's yeah. telling? Yeah, I mean, I would I would say bring it up to him and I would hope that he would say something because if she, first of all what what 45-year-old woman is going to like some 20-year-old and being like, "Hey, can I get some advice?" Like, "Come on, lady, yeah. get it together." After talking for 45 minutes. 45 yeah. minutes. She sounds like a stay-at-home mom. No, but I mean like she take offense, stay at home. <laughs> no, but she like says she likes she like send the call like the the woman told her that she always felt she could go to the ex girlfriend for advice. Mm-hmm. That's so what? fucking weird. <laughs> That's true. That's so I didn't even think about that. So, That's so fucking. First of all, not only is that weird. That's so fucking inappropriate. Yeah, and also take in mind how, how old they are. So they've been dating for what a year and a half, mm-hmm. and they're twenty one. Yeah. So they've been, oh, they've been dating Making since she was 19. Money, Shut up. Hold on. I, first of all, so jealous. What do you do? Yeah. We um, need a follow up call. I know. What do you do? What do you, what, <laughs> what does, does he your do? boyfriend do? What does his mother do? Um, but here's the thing. They started dating when they were 19. So that meant that whatever ex girlfriend he had at like 18, 19, and this fucking Good mom is calling call. an 18 year old for advice and being like, we were so close. That's fucking weird. That's so, and you cried for four months when your son broke up with his high school yeah. fucking girlfriend. That's so fucking weird. That's that's so now that you're like fucking, really drilling. Can you imagine it? like a 45 year old woman? Granted, let's say that she's 42 at the time. So she's 42, which also, by the way, is a relatively young mom, right? Yeah, that's like, for a teenager. Let's say like 40. Okay, let's go back. Let's say she's 45 and she's going to her son is dating. Her son is 18 and he's dating an 18 year old girl. And this 45 year old woman is going to an 18 year old girl for advice. What advice? Like our French manicure is still in. Like what the <laughs> fuck are you saying to her? That's so vastly inappropriate. First of all, this, these, this girlfriend, like some... maybe this girlfriend broke up with him because like, I can't fucking deal with your goddamn mom. That might be true. I, I, yeah. Like what did that? Like, 
That's you took so the words weird. right out of my mouth. Like, what advice are you asking your son's teenage girlfriend for? What does she know that you don't know or you can't figure out with like Google. your other 40 yeah. something friends? And I wonder what his relationship with his mom is like. Like, is his mom like, has, has she been a single mom her whole life and is like constantly trying to like date around and be younger than she is and like fit in with a younger crowd? Is but that why she's latching onto a younger maybe girlfriend? She was dating one of the friends. Ew. <laughs> Oh my God, babe, nasty. I don't know. She's like, let's let's gab, let's talk. Like, do you think Stish. Garrett's into me? He's so cute. It's like, um, Mrs. Walker? She's probably one of those moms that like has everybody over in her basement and is like, lets them drink because right. it's safer. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Snacks, a condom? Um, I just think like, I, I would definitely bring it up with him. I would gauge the situation. I would be really fucking surprised if his previous girlfriend didn't bring it up with him as well. Unless this girlfriend and her had a very odd relationship, which I really don't foresee it's happening. Um, and I also would wonder, like, what's his relationship like with his ex-girlfriend? Like, does he very talk about question. it with the same kind of like, d- is it like a taboo subject you guys don't talk about? Like, was this a really big heartbreak for not only him, but the whole family? Like, I know my friends, when they've broken up with their boyfriends, like some of us, we glorify their relationships and it's like, God, I really miss this person. My friend used to date. My friend misses them way fucking less because they were really in the relationship and we just did the outside of it. So I would say like, if he is just as torn up about this breakup that as his mom is, I would just be like, get the fuck out of that way. Because no matter what, you're never going to live up to this 18 year old girl who apparently yeah. was like super yeah. into like going to go see Kate Hudson movies. With apparently his mom. it was like, wise so her years. fucking weird to me yeah I, mean, I genuinely can't wrap my head around it yeah what do your what did what does ex-girlfriend's parents think about being like why the fuck are you talking to like so-and-so's mom all well, the goddamn time i guess i'll Ugh. i'll amend what i originally said um i would say talk to him first then talk to her to if it bring, doesn't he doesn't respond to yeah well. if he says don't worry about it um, I re- or I'm not really comfortable bringing that up with her. Then you're gonna then say, okay, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm gonna bring it up with her. And if he really pushes back on that and makes it a big deal, reach out to the ex girlfriend. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I'm so curious. If you guys break up, though, honestly, yeah, if you guys break, if you break up, up you gotta fucking find this ex girlfriend and you gotta ask. Um, but if he really pushes back, and then I think that's. That's a yeah. massive red flag. Yeah. And you gotta you gotta start thinking about uh getting out of that. Yeah. Cause also if she's that fucking weird. It sounds like a mom who like breastfed her kid until he was like 17. I just I just wanna I wanna go back one more time. <laughs> what the fuck do you ask an 18 year old for advice? Do you on? Ask? I literally being like at high lows, are those in? Gauchos. <laughs> Love them, yeah, hate them. Okay, I guess. I guess that's like. Do, that's do you what like you Nordstrom's think, or like Macy's like, better? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or is it like, is she single and being like, so like, if I like, should I do this with my like new boyfriend or whatever? Whatever it is, there's no way it's appropriate. There's just no way it's appropriate. It's a really, it's crossing a massive line of not only like the like this privacy that you have in your relationship with your boyfriend, but like also like the age gap and like. Yeah. Do you want that for the rest of your fucking life? Fuck the, no. Yeah, I don't know. I th- I think I think my I think it took my mom like seven years to ask my brother's fiance and now wife like advice about something. And when she asked about it, it was about like a what art gallery should exactly, I visit? Exactly. That was yeah. exactly what it was. Innocent shit. Innocent shit. Fuck this weird fucking mom. That said, we really need follow up with you. So, so much follow up. Please call us. I back wish you could send me a picture of this mom back. too, because I'm picturing her as Amy Poehler in Mean Girls. Me too. That's right? what's totally. been in my head. Fucking the, the, whole the whole time. Fucking time. I'm picturing but not as cool. No, I'm, not nearly <laughs> as cool. I'm picturing a more down market Amy Poehler and Mean Girls at like a senior frogs or something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And like a box blonde. Yeah, with like one of those cowboy hats that like the the edges of like Ooh. really rolled oh, up yeah. at the yeah. sides, the woven the, like, ones. Like red and has mm-hmm. a little white tassel. Yeah, on it. she probably really likes Jimmy Buffett. Loves we're probably gonna, Jimmy Buffett. We're probably gonna run into her at Stagecoach. Or yeah, something like yeah. that. And she has her tongue down like a twenty year old guy's throat. Yep, loves her some frat boys. Ugh, so gross, so fucking weird. Please let us know what happens. The um, advice was probably like. Do you think pol- do you think there's anything hotter on a guy than a polo shirt and cargo uh. shorts? Because I don't. <laughs> I fucking can't. 
<laughs> Thanks for laughing at my awesome joke, I, Mel. I laughed too. No, you did not. I chuckled. It was just a little more silent. Okay, guys, producer's corner time. This is, hey, babe, do you know what producer's corner is? I do know what producer's corner is. Tell me what it is. Well, it used to be Jack calling in with like a fake call that was hilarious. Whoa, I have no idea what you're talking about. (laughs) Jack never called in. Never. Not once. You know, Leo listened to a whole call of Jack making Dick had no idea. <laughs> I did. One. Good thing you're pretty, boy. I did one too, and you didn't realize it either. No, but your voice did sound different. Like, know, you I actually attempted. It. Yeah. Like, Jack never tried to change his voice. And they were like, oh, great, like, go. <laughs> Are you kidding? Okay. Or, or what else is it? Uh, it's Mel chooses a question, right? Or, what's the third one? Babe. I those I thought that was the only no, two options. No, there's one more option. What's the third option? The coolest option. No offense, Mel. What's the coolest option? A callback. Oh, callback, of course. Apparently not of course because you forgot. No, I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry, listeners. Is it a callback? Yes, it's a callback. Um, so this is from uh, episode 17 when Lily was the guest. Hey, Megan. I'm calling back. I was the caller on your episode with Lily um, talking about my boyfriend and the Me Too movement. Uh, Unfortunately, I just listened to your podcast where you answered, you know, gave me some advice, and I really, really appreciated it very much so. Um, Even in hindsight, uh, my boyfriend and I did talk about the situation. Um, I gave it some space. I waited around a week and a half before talking, before bringing it up again, like you and Lily had mentioned. And I just basically told him, hey, I've been thinking about it a lot because the thought of you being hurt just hurts my heart because I love you. Um, But if you'd like me to put it out of my mind, I'm more than happy to. And if you ever want to talk about it, then we can. Um, And we did. And obviously I won't disclose uh, the happenings, but I wanted to reiterate a point that you and Lily did talk about that I think is super important too, that not all wounds in anybody's past are open all the time. Like the first half of our relationship, basically, um, it just felt like we were, my boyfriend and I would go through my closet and start cleaning out just like all the skeletons, just like one after another. And he handled it so, so sweetly and with such compassion and understanding. And I think why, it bothered me so much that he didn't tell me it was not because he didn't trust me, but just because he had done that for me and I just want to be that for him so badly. I just feel so indebted to him and I adore him and I love him. But yeah, I just wanted to bring that point home. He talked about it very calmly, very coolly, and he had obviously thought about it a lot by himself and that was enough for him. But, you know, he's my person and he wanted to tell his person about it so it definitely brought us closer and even though i heard the advice after the fact i really appreciate it thanks lily thanks megan oh my gosh oh it was a sad call i remember that call um but i'm so i'm i'm so glad that you feel better about it and that you can have the comfort of knowing that he's this is something that he's dealt with and he's worked with and that um and yeah that it doesn't have a reflection on your relationship It's just, yeah, it's sucky. It's sad. It's definitely, it's still a sad situation from the first call. Nothing really changes with that. Um, But A, I'm really glad our advice helped, even if you heard it after the fact. But I think it's also cool that you pretty much did exactly what we said, Um, which I think, I think is awesome. Um, And yeah, I think it, I think it does give a good message. Like you were saying that like not all wounds are open. And so much of the time when we date people or we have people in our lives, we want to I don't know, like we always want to help people and all that stuff. And we forget that they have had an existence and a life before us. And they've been able to like get through life on their own before and like deal with that stuff on their own. And I think it's great that you, he knows that he has your support too, which I think is great because the stuff is so common and so tough. Yeah. I mean, um, uh, you know, I think it's, I can certainly, um, understand maybe feeling like, um, I don't know what the right word is like disappointed that he didn't come to you initially or yeah, he didn't like divulge, divulge it up front. Mm-hmm. But I think like, um, when, when it's something that's like that complicated and like that, um, 
just tough for someone, you know, you really have to like be understanding that they're going to tell you on their own terms. Yeah. And it happened. And you guys were able to do that. Yeah. So I think that's great. Um, but yeah, so sending you guys both love, it's a tough thing. Yeah. It sounds like you, uh, you guys had like a, a really, like a, like a breakthrough. So just yeah. keep, just keep being there, you know, keep doing you guys. Well, that's it for today's episode. Thanks so much for being on it, babe. You're welcome. Did you enjoy yourself? I did. I have a special message for all the moms out there. Don't ask your teenage <laughs> son's girlfriend for advice because uh, that's weird. Things we've learned on today's podcast. Yeah, we've learned two very important lessons. That one. And au pairs kill it. Au pairs Dude, live fuck, yeah. the life. Want to get a kick-ass hot boyfriend? Named Lucas. Be an au pair. Yeah. I hope you guys all have a fantastic Valentine's Day, even if you're single. I think Valentine's Day is so fun. What are you buying me for Valentine's Day? Um, some Pop Rocks. Ugh, um, I fucking hate you. Raw water. Raw water? Yeah, it's the it's the new thing. It's all the, it's the fuck charcoal water. It's the water. new uh, like Silicon Valley thing. Mm, if you're drinking water nice. and it's not raw, then you're not elevating yourself, bro. Okay. And then the third thing I'm going to buy you is probably... Uh, if it's not a puppy, I'm <laughs> done. <laughs> Um, a puppy. You make it be a she's puppy. She's been asking for a puppy. I, be, be like, I want a puppy so fucking bad. It's going to be like best wishes. Just like a, like a salutation. A salutation. <laughs> Just a greetings greeting. And salutations. Yeah. <laughs> greetings and salutations. Just a sign off. You know. Uh, well, thanks. I'm going to get myself a puppy for Valentine's Day. Um, I hope you guys have a great Valentine's Day, whether you're single or not. It can always be fun because it's pink and there's hearts and you can eat candy on sale so on the 15th. Candy. Big fans. If you guys enjoyed this episode, we would love if you rated it on the podcast app. Subscribe while you're there if you're not subscribed already. And speaking of subscribe, if you didn't know that we filmed this entire episode for YouTube. So if you want to look at me looking like I'm really fucking high, I'm not. I'm just tired and I got LASIK and my eyes get really red late at night. <laughs> um, you can check that out. And leave a comment. Yeah, leave a, leave, leave a nice comment. Tell him how much he looks like Mark Ruffalo because we've never heard that one before. Yep. A little late in that game. And you look like Rosemont Rose- Pike. Mm-hmm. The only feedback Ooh. I got in my audition. <laughs> Power. Have a my performance. Power couple. I would totally buy that. I'm excited, guys. There's a survey for you. Who doesn't love a survey? I love surveys. Especially when the survey is about you guys saying what products and things that you like that we'll be able to get ads for so you guys can get coupons and deals. So essentially, it's you doing the survey, and through the survey, we'll figure out what things you guys are interested in, and therefore, what things we will partner with so you guys can get good promo codes. So check it out in the description. Check it out in the description, Fill guys. that mother out. Fill that mother out. Okay, guys. So hope you enjoyed this, and uh, let us know if you want Mots back on the podcast if he gave some good advice. I would love to come back, but only if the fans want it. Okay, well, you live here, so I feel like it's pretty fucking easy. Okay, guys. Mm, I mean, just have Mel reach out to my people. Shut the fuck <laughs> up. I can't with you. <laughs> oh, my God. So okay, guys. So your people as Megan. No, it biz at matsangdahl.com. Shut the <laughs> fuck up. Oh, did that kill you? <laughs> okay, guys. Bye. Bye. Blame Me is a production by me, produced and directed by Jack Ferry, associate producer Melissa DeMons, edited by Melissa DeMons, post-production sound by Chris Henry, and music by Giacomo Picasso and Ryan Hunter. I will see you guys in two weeks, and don't blame me if your life bursts into flames before then. (laughs) 